forgotten in the barren Arctic tundra on the peninsula here, surrounded by lakes, is a decrepit cluster of two-story buildings. The only living creatures to be seen are Arctic rabbits taking shelter among the debris. It's so remote, extremely dry, cold conditions. It's just not a great place to be. Concrete buildings lay derelict with twisted wreckage, smashed and scattered equipment. And at the center of it, one building looks like it's been ripped apart. It's all of these buildings partly derelict. What was going on here? Was it some sort of concentration camp? Was it some sort of military base? So what took place here in this bleak and inaccessible corner of Russia's Arctic North? And why was this site abandoned? In the 1960s, the Soviet Union is in a scientific and technological race with the West to understand the inner depths of our planet. But this investigation is not part of the Soviet Union's open military rivalry. It's a scientific step to understand the geology that is hidden thousands of feet beneath us. At the moment, the way that we look inside the Earth is through what we call seismic waves. We make a big explosion on the Earth's surface, and we see the way the shock waves travel into the Earth and back out again. And we come up with structures. We find barriers in there. But what are they? In the 60s and 70s, there was this huge fascination with the structure of the Earth and trying to figure out if you could drill down through the Earth's crust, the top layer, into the mantle, which is the soft kind of plastic layer that lies under the crust. It was almost like a subterranean space race. Who could get down the deepest first? This complex is the site of an extraordinary project to uncover the secrets of the Earth's geological structure. This is the Kola Superdeep Borehole. Only about nine inches in diameter, this metal lid opens a new scientific frontier. But it's undertaken in competition with America. In the 60s, the Americans had started a project called Mohole to try to dig down through the crust. They didn't get very far, but they learned a lot. With the Mohole in Guadalupe Island, Mexico, American geologists only reach 601 feet through the seabed, 11,600 feet under the water. But the Russians are aiming for something over four times deeper. And then the Russians came back in 1970 with this super deep borehole. And they have a distinct advantage in drilling in such a cold location. The Kola Peninsula sits in a, an area of very, very old crust. It's called a shield, really old crust. And what's important there is that the temperature increase as you go with depth is very light. So you have much more chance of getting deeper before it gets too hot. The prize for Soviet engineers is not just outperforming the USA and gaining new geological data. They also want to control the Earth's resources. And they want to do it from a remote base. This is a very out of the way place. They had to bring in all their materials and expertise. But the Soviet Union did a lot of that. They were good at <laughs> infrastructure and building big, sophisticated bases in remote locations. The digging of the well itself is a big difficulty. I have never drilled anything like it. No one could advise us on the way to do it. But drilling into the Earth's crust in this out-of-the-way location is easier said than done. The first problem that has to be overcome is one of basic physics. Even though the borehole will only be nine inches in diameter, the immense torque of turning drill tubing, weighing over a million pounds, makes the task impossible. 
So Soviet engineers use a radical new way of overcoming this difficulty. An annular shaped core drill. The technology with drilling is you actually just have the drill bit at the end and moving. You force mud and other things down to keep this thing moving, and that's where it's, it's grinding away at the rock. And in between, you can take out the, the, essentially the shaft of rock, what we call the core, and look at the structure of the earth. The deeper you drill, the harder it is to manage the drilling process. Equipment can get stuck in the hole, the temperatures get really high, the rock doesn't behave properly. So this was a huge technological achievement for its day. The difficulties were colossal. We had to develop everything, there and then. And we contended with the difficulties of the north, being short summers, cold and remoteness. For over a decade, they drill into the crust using a 200-ton, 200-foot-high drilling machine, housed in a huge yellow tower in the center of the borehole site. Drilling deep into the Earth's crust, averaging 196 feet a month, it wears out nearly 25 miles of pipes just from friction and heat. And the borehole becomes the deepest hole in the world at an astonishing 39,000 feet. The borehole beat the world record in 1979. It was almost 40,000 feet below the surface, which is an amazingly deep distance when you think about it. The Marianas Trench, which is the deepest place in the ocean, is not even near that deep. But at 39,587 feet, there is a catastrophic failure. When you're drilling so deep into the Earth's crust, you're actually miles away from where you are on the surface, and you're drilling and drilling away. That's one thing. If you then take the drill bit out, and then you try and re-enter the hole, that's when it can cause many, many problems. It's like trying to find that needle in a haystack down to where, where you were drilling before, and the drill bit itself can get stuck, and you can break the drill string. And in this instance, thousands of feet of drill string were, were broken. Engineers now have to start a new hole from an offshoot at 23,300 feet. It takes another five years to bore hole down to the amazing depth of 40,230 feet. But at this incredible depth, drilling becomes practically impossible. The Soviets discover that when you get far enough underground, the rocks are no longer rocks. Because as you go down, it starts getting hotter. And as it gets hotter, it's harder for the equipment, for your drill equipment to hold up. But also, the rock itself begins to get a little bit soft. It begins to flow a little bit like silly putty. The temperatures of the borehole itself were getting extremely hot, so hot that the drill head itself was becoming almost impossible to operate due to just the elevated temperatures, just so hot down there. With their equipment failing rapidly as they encountered staggeringly high temperatures at these depths, the engineers at Kola have no option but to stop further drilling. Though they fail to reach their target depth, they push scientific knowledge of the Earth's structure further than ever before and make astonishing discoveries. One thing that surprised them was they discovered a lot of water deep, deep down in the borehole, way below where you would find groundwater or any effects of ocean water. Scientists also found there was a tremendous amount of hydrogen trapped in the rocks, which is completely unexpected. They theorized it came from water that had been squeezed so strongly that it actually released hydrogen gas. But that isn't all they find. We did find life, bacteria, at the depth of 24,600 feet. The microfossils found that deep were actually single-celled organisms that had existed long, long ago. And scientists were very surprised that life could even exist or could be found that deeply. The Kola borehole penetrates nearly a third of the way through the Baltic continental crust. It's the deepest artificial point on Earth, a record that is still held today.